Hi parents, in this video I'm going to talk about Venn diagrams, introduce uh, Venn diagram types of questions to you. So in this type of question we always have at least two sets or groups of people or of things and we have to um, organize it and see whether there's an overlap and so on. So let, let's just look at the typical type of question. This one's right out of grade two, but it's typical for grade one, for grade two, for grade three, and grade four. So I thought I would do grade two because it's sort of in the middle and, um, and you can all see what to do. So this question says, all of the 29 students in Mr. Funny's class played games at the Halloween party. 19 of them played ping pong and 17 played video games. Some played both ping pong and video games. How many students played both? So you can see the two groups of students and you can see that they belong to one overarching group. The overarching group is Mr. Funny's class. And this is how you recognize a Venn diagram. So that is actually what we would call this Mr. Funny's class is what we would call the universe for this question. That's all that's included in this question. So the universe is drawn in as a rectangle. And you do draw that. The kids have to understand this idea that this is the universe of this question. So you draw that in. And then, um, and then with that too, then there's a couple of groupings. And the first grouping is um, ping pong. And the second is video games. So you've got your universe, and then you've got this group, and then you've got this other set. And so this one we'll call ping pong. And this one, video games. Just so that it's labeled. And I do ask that the students do label these so that they don't get mixed up and they know very clearly what's happening. It is also part of communication skills for kids in mathematics so that if someone else looks at what they've done, they know what they've done and they can see their thinking. This is um, a skill for the kids to learn. And so they can learn this when they're young, even in grade one, again, and they repeat it in grade two, grade three, and grade four. They get used to doing that, and when they go to other types of mathematics or other diagrams, they automatically think something needs to be labeled so we know what it is. Okay, so now we've got the universe, and let's put the numbers in now. For the universe, there were 29 students, so we will put, let's just put, I'm going to put total up here. This is where the total always goes because that's the total of the universe, and that was 29 students. So again, you label that. You don't necessarily have to put all of this. You could just put 29 students in there, or you could just even put total. Somehow there has to be an indication of what's in this universe. Then for the ping pong, it says that there are 19, so we're just going to label 19 are in this complete blue circle. And then there are 17 video games, so there are 17 kids who played video games, so that's the complete orange circle. And now um, you're, going to in, you're going to figure out how much we're just ping pong, and that would be this area that does not overlap with the orange, and just video games is this, this area, and this would be those kids who play ping pong and video games, the double up. Now, when you're teaching it to your child, you want to sort of go through this and explain, first of all, what these are illustrating, because there has to be an understanding that we have, we want to put this in a, set, in a form that we can understand and see, and John Venn, is, is the name of the mathematician who actually came up with this method of, of showing this type of question and organizing information. So we call them Venn diagrams. And it is a capital V and um, for, for that because it is named after a person's name. So these are Venn diagrams. Now, let's figure out what, what we do here. It says there are 29 students, and this is where you introduce it to the kids. You say, okay, this is all the information. Teach the kids to write it down. They've got it. Now, you need to find out how many students played both. So in other words, this area is what you're going to find. So if you look counted, and this, this is what you would say to them like then, your, your child, okay, if you have 19 ping pong, kids who played ping pong, and 17 who played video games, What's the total of that? How many is that all together? Get them to sort of figure out 
you know, what's important about this? Like, let, let's try and find the total. Because you know there's 29 kids, and then what else can we do, students? So if you add that up, you get 36 students. Now, there are 36 students, it says, if you look at these, and then you want to ask the kids, uh-oh, but it says there's only 29 in the class. So something has happened, and what is it? And that's when you get them to figure out. And if they don't figure it out right away, you go back again and say, well, how can we have this? How can it say that there are 36 students here if you add these two up and you've only got that? And if they really don't get it, maybe you can talk about both. What happens if a student had both, played both? What if you played both? Where would you be? Would you be in only the ping pong or the video games? Which one would you be included in? And say, oh, here. But you'd be counted twice, wouldn't you? So if you're counted twice, you can't be counted twice because you were counted once for ping pong and once for video games. So this area are all the kids, all the students who are counted twice. And that's what you want to get to. This idea of the area where there's both is actually the fact that they counted twice. So, um, so I'm going to just write that down here is both. You don't have to write this, but equals counted twice. So if they're counted twice, then this number here will be larger than this because we have some kids who are counted twice. So how many kids were counted twice? Well, you take that 36 then, and again, you want the kids to figure out how many more were there. And so you've got seven who were counted twice. All right. Now, where do you put that in this diagram? Well, you would put that right here. And um, so you can have seven counted twice. Now, another way that, and I'll, 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 sorry, I'll finish this off. So if seven were counted twice, it's counted in here, and there's a total of 19 that were supposed to be in this big blue circle. We've already counted seven. How many more would be in this whole circle? So a total of 19, so this would be 19 minus seven, which equals 12. Okay, so you have 12 students in here, and in this case, you have the 17 minus 7 already counted, which equals 10. So there are 10 students here, and only video games, plus another 7, which gives a total of 17. There were 12 students only with ping pong, plus another 7 who also played video games, gives you a total of 19. So make sure they understand what's being illustrated here and represented. If students find that difficult, what you can do is say, well, there's a seven that, that are counted twice, so let's put the seven people in here. And instead of writing that seven right away, especially for the young children, and you're starting with some smaller numbers, you can actually put like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have those seven people there. Then what you do is you say, well, there's seven already there, so how many would be here? And you count them out, and, and this is a lot, so this is why I usually do it with a much smaller number. But you can actually have them list it, then they start counting, and they can see, okay, if you just have the orange one, how many students were in there? And then you do the same on this side, and you have them draw it out, and they count it up, and they can see that. Because this equation may be a little bit too advanced for them to understand. I've even done this with grade 7 students. So it's just getting over that so that you can get to the equation, the algorithm, after. So don't be scared to start off with this. Don't get them just to memorize this. Ensure they've understood it. And... Um, and they, kids usually like doing this, and then they, they have it. This, of course, would be 17 of the, the oh, no, sorry, it would be 10 of these little guys in this one. Um, here, I'll, I'll just do it very quickly so that you can see that one, two, five. So that's what they would have. Okay, and then if you add them all up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and that works. Okay, and you would do the same on this side, and that's how you would do that. So um, that's a basic, that's the very beginning of Venn diagrams. Over here, I've got vocabulary. So the universe, again, is 
What is the universe of this question? Everything that's included in this question. Right now it may seem obvious that it's just those two circles, but sometimes it's three circles. And sometimes there are kids who are in this class who don't play ping pong or they don't, and they don't play video games. And where would you put them? They're still in that universe. So that universe has to be laid out. So you start teaching that to the, your kids right away with a simple question like this. Overlap region, make sure they understand what overlap means, one over the other, so it's counted twice, just like I've got to finger, like they're overlapping here. And then both, this is the both area. So that's, this is the both where they're counted twice. So that's both. This is only, this is an only area. I'm going to say only like this because it's only video games. It's not the ping pong. And therefore, this area is also the only area where it's only that. And, um, and then regions, uh, ensure that they understand what a region is. And a region, if um, you are English as a second language, it's, um, a region is an area. Okay, so this all area is, uh, is, is a region. And so what region is overlapping? This is the region. This is the area that's overlapping there. Okay, where both is. All right, so that's the beginning of Venn diagrams. And then you can get much more interesting and uh, much more complicated. But this is the start. And get them going by seeing their success by even just drawing it out to begin with. And they've got some success.